this message. Breaking news overnight, changes made to the final presidential debate. The Radical question. left, would you Who shut up, man? Listen? Why moments like that will be less likely at the debate on Thursday. And on Capitol Hill this morning, a deadline to reach a deal for a new coronavirus stimulus package. Plus the vote in the Senate today on a standalone bill. Working on a plan to help those experiencing homelessness this winter. We'll tell you what we know about the plan coming up. Now, CBS 13 is on your side with Good Day May. Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Katie Sampson. And I'm Jeff Peterson. And more on those stories coming up. But first, let's get right to that forecast with meteorologist Lexi O'Connor. Lexi, we'll see more clouds moving in today, but at least we'll hang on to those mild temperatures. That's right. Even this morning, you notice the difference out there. Temperatures are in the 40s across the region. Yesterday, we were in the low to mid 30s at this hour, so not quite as cool this morning. We're at 49 degrees in Portland and in Lewiston, 42 in Freiburg, but even Sanford is at 47 degrees. So not as cool this morning. We still have some fog out there. Visibility has now just dropped down to a mile in Lewiston, a mile and a half visibility in Augusta. So watch out for some areas of fog. We do have some showers starting to move into New Hampshire as well, especially through southern and central New Hampshire, right around Lake Winnipesaukee right now, seeing some showers move in from the west. They're all associated with a cold front that is going to slowly move through the region today. It will keep the clouds around and bring the chance for a few scattered showers as well. Temperatures today will climb into the low 60s for most towns. Some spots will make it into the mid 60s. So mild today despite the cloudy skies. And you will want to maybe keep the umbrella handy through, especially the afternoon hours and into tonight. We will have the chance for some scattered showers. I'll have more on the timing of those showers coming up in your full forecast. For now, Katie and Jeff, over to you. Lexi, thank you. Breaking news overnight, the Commission on Presidential Debates says microphones will be muted during parts of the debate on Thursday. President Trump and Democratic candidate Joe Biden will not be able to speak during the initial two minutes the other candidate has to answer a question. And by the way, you can watch that debate right here on CBS 13 at 9 o'clock on Thursday. Portland City Councilors approve a plan to extend outdoor dining through January 4th. City staff will begin the process of reopening closed streets on November 1st. Businesses have to apply for a permit, but all fees will be waived. Businesses will also be required to put barriers around people, furniture, and structures to keep customers safe. And new this morning, Portland could have as many as 34 cannabis retailers. According to the Press Herald, city councilors voted in favor of licensing almost everyone who applied in the first round of city licensing. Originally, Portland was going to give 20 stores retail marijuana licenses. Uh, the council also voted to relax its eligibility requirements. That makes it easier for applicants to receive a license if they've been late paying city taxes. Well, Coming up at 6.30 on Good Day, Maine, the Portland City Mayor makes her first annual State of the City address. Uh, what she wants to address in the coming year and why virtual City Council meetings might be here to stay. And new developments this morning. Portland is moving forward with plans to house the city's homeless population as the weather gets colder. Good Day, Maine's Kara Bracken joins us now live in Portland to explain. Kara? Good morning. We're joining you live from the Community Corrections Center, which is also known as the Joyce House. Now, this is one area that Portland is looking at to add shelter space under this new plan ahead of the winter months. Now, this right now, the city of Portland, they are looking at a memorandum, finalizing that memorandum of understanding with county officials to use this temporary location. It comes amid growing concerns about Portland's homeless population during the pandemic that we highlighted this summer when we reported on gatherings at Deering Oaks and the sleep out protests at City Hall. Now, the city has had to reduce capacity at existing shelters due to COVID-19 precautions, but this new plan could bump the city's capacity from 244 to 274. The city is expecting to be able to use the Community Correction Center as a shelter from the end of the month through April 30th as a shelter for up to 50 people. In addition, city staff are working with a hotel in the area to provide beds for up to 149 people. Right now, the city is offering 75 beds available at the Oxford Street Shelter, 75 beds at the Portland Expo Center. Local area hotels are providing emergency shelter through general assistance, and the family shelter is full right now, 
Motel rooms, they are provided to family shelter guests as overflow. And a note here that starting on October 25th, the city will not be able to keep using the Portland Expo as a shelter as their contract with the Maine Red Claws begins on that date. Now, the Community Correction Center here on County Way would help replace those spaces. The city says they would staff the place 24-7 and would not cost anything extra. We're reporting live in Portland. I'm Kara Bracken for Good Day, Maine. Happening tomorrow, Vice President Mike Pence returns to New England just two days after visiting Maine. He'll head to Portsmouth for another Make America Great Again rally. That starts at 1.30 at Port City Air. The Vice President was in Herman yesterday. Hundreds turned out in support as he made a plea to voters to help President Trump carry Northern Maine again. Maine and America need four more years of President Donald Trump in the White House. Our democracy, our country depends on this election. I like what he's done the last four years. Um, I'm a diehard Republican. Um, I think he's the right man. There were also a handful of protesters at the rally. One man says he doesn't care if he's outnumbered at events like this. He wants people to see him. He also says people should think twice about supporting the president. Trump supporters think about who they're voting for. Simple as that. Police and protesters agree that interactions remain friendly and civil. All right, now we are just two weeks away from Election Day, and already over 28 million Americans have cast their ballots. Uh, that is over a fifth of all ballots cast back in 2016. And as the days count down, the two campaigns are making their final appeals to either keep the current administration or start a new era with Joe Biden in the White House. With your continued support every day between now and November 3rd, we're going to have a great victory. Justice is on the ballot in 2020. Economic justice is on the ballot in 2020. Climate justice is on the ballot in 2020. According to the Trump campaign website, the president is making a stop in Pennsylvania today. Meanwhile, Democratic officials tell CNN former President Barack Obama is expected to start campaigning for Joe Biden this week. And new this morning, the FBI will have special agents in Portland on Election Day to investigate any report of voter fraud. Uh, there will also be agents at the resident agency in Bangor. Uh, it's part of the Department of Justice's Election Day program. Two U.S. assistant attorneys have also been appointed to lead uh, DOJ efforts in Maine for Election Day. Anyone who wants to report an election problem can call U.S. Attorney John Osborne in Portland. The phone number is on your screen right now, 207-771. 3214. New this morning, the U.S. Supreme Court rejects an argument that mail in ballots received after Election Day in Pennsylvania should not be counted. The Republican Party made the appeal. This means ballots in the state will be counted if officials get them within three days of Election Day. The ruling was split four to four with Chief Justice John Roberts siding with the court's three liberals. Developing now in Washington state, voters in an Oregon County are noticing a small mistake on their ballots. In several state measures, the words yes and no appear randomly in the description. According to the election office, the mistake happened because of a formatting error. The proof was certified as a PDF file. And then we go from that point to copy paste into a software design system. And that's when those uh, words yes and no crept in uh, for the uh, ballot for those four uh, statewide measures. The elections office and the secretary of state's office in Oregon say the mistake will not impact the election. Well, there are now 46 active coronavirus cases in Waldo County. And today the Captain Albert Stevens School will be closed through tomorrow due to a second coronavirus case there. This is the fourth case in RSU 71. Superintendent says the positive cases in the school district are likely related to the outbreak in Brooks. And due to the nearly 50 cases in the county, RSU 71 is suspending all athletic and co-curricular activities through the rest of the week. Practices are canceled and all postponed games will be rescheduled. The district plans to resume sports on Monday. All staff and inmates at the Maine State Prison in Warren are now being tested for the virus. This comes after an employee tested positive. The prison and the Maine CDC are already contact tracing. The facility is now locked down to reduce any possible additional exposures. 
An update for you this morning on that outbreak at a church in Brooks. The main CDC says 32 people have now tested positive for COVID-19. Brooks Pentecostal Church and its Christian Academy remain closed. The main CDC is urging anyone who visited the church since October 2nd to consider self-quarantining. And across the state, the main CDC is reporting 23 new cases of COVID-19. There have now been 5,962 cases since the pandemic began. No new deaths are being reported, and close to 5,200 people have now recovered. Today, the deadline to reach an agreement on a new stimulus package expires. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has set the deadline on Sunday. She says if an agreement is not reached by the end of today, a bill will not pass before the election. Meanwhile, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has scheduled a vote today on a standalone bill to give funding to the Paycheck Protection Program. CBS 13 is on your side with our annual drug take back day. We're helping you get rid of those unused and unwanted prescription medications in your home. Uh, join us coming up Friday as we team up with the Cumberland County Sheriff's Office for a socially distant drop off. It goes from 6 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. right here at our studios at 81 Northport Drive in Portland. You can find more information on our website. That, of course, is WGME.com. Still ahead on Good Day Maine, a new study on convalescent plasma therapy treatment for the coronavirus. How gender and age may play a role in its effectiveness. Plus a rise in pollution during the pandemic, the push for reusable masks. And at 6.30, a Portland police officer injured on the job. The injuries he sustained during an arrest earlier this week. Election 2020, the constant controversy, the debate, issues. I'm Eric Bolling. Join me for an exclusive interview with President Trump on America This Week. Sunday night at 1130 on CBS 13. Let's talk about floors. Floors for toddlers. Floors for toys. Floors for stories. Floors for screams. Floors for feasting and foraging. Floors for finding out how flexible you are. There's floors for all, and now they're at Lowe's. Come on, let us floor you at Lowe's with new on-trend styles, lighting, and decor. Choose your style, get it installed. I'm Norm. I'm Saz. And we live in Columbia, Missouri. We do consulting, but we also write. We take care of ourselves constantly. It's important. We walk three to five times a week, a couple miles at a time. We've both been taking Prevagen for a little more than 11 years now. After about 30 days of taking it, we noticed a clarity that we didn't notice before. It's still helping me. I still notice a difference. Prevagen. Healthier brain. Better life. Susan Collins says she's very, very concerned. concerned. Very, very troubled. troubled. Very, very disappointed. disappointed. Well, Senator Collins, so are we. We're troubled you voted seven times to gut protections for pre-existing conditions. We're concerned if you're re-elected, Mitch McConnell will stay in charge. We're disappointed that you voted 94% of the time with Donald Trump. Troubled, concerned, disappointed. 24 years in Washington is long enough. I'm Sarah Gideon, and I approve this message. Allison is a diabetic. Without the Affordable Care Act, Millions of patients like her with pre-existing conditions would lose their health care. But some want to take the Affordable Care Act away when we need it most. Should we repeal the Affordable Care Act? Yes. I'm Jared Golden, and that's why I'm working to safeguard protections for pre-existing conditions and lower prescription costs. I approve this message because every manner deserves good health care they can afford. Times are tough. Can we afford Susan Collins? Collins voted seven times to gut protections for pre-existing conditions, for higher taxes on middle-class families, higher prices for prescription drugs. And Susan Collins voted eight times for budgets that slashed Medicare. We are getting slammed while Collins cashes in. Six million dollars from corporate PACs. After 24 years in Washington, Susan Collins is costing us too much. SMP is responsible for the content of this advertising. Remember me? I'm still fishing these traps. And Sarah Gideon's still not telling the truth about Susan Collins. Susan always fights to protect Medicare and Social Security. And on taxes, it's Sarah Gideon who wants you to pay more. Susan cut taxes for Mainers. It's pretty simple. Gideon wants to raise your taxes. Susan Collins wants to cut your taxes. Don't fall into that Sarah Gideon trap. Because Sarah Gideon is not for Maine. I'm Susan Collins, and I've approved this message.
Starting today, every Sanford school will have a free flu shot clinic. This morning at 8 o'clock, Sanford Middle and High Schools. This morning at 8 o'clock, Sanford Middle and High Schools will have those clinics. Willard School will hold its clinic at 11 a.m. Those schools will also have clinics on Thursday at the same time, as well as the Bridge School at noon. You can learn more about when and where the clinics are by heading to the Sanford School Department's website. Well, new this morning, the Maine Medical Center Research Institute is joining an initiative to create a centralized national coronavirus data platform. Database would be used to study the virus and identify potential treatments. The institute received a $203,000 grant from West Virginia University. The platform is being put together by a partnership of over 30 five institutions. And a new study says blood from the sickest coronavirus patients could be the most effective for plasma therapy treatment. That's because the sicker the patient is with the virus, the stronger the antibody response seems to be. The Johns Hopkins University study also found older men who were hospitalized with coronavirus were among the strongest candidates for plasma donation. A traffic alert for you this morning. The main Department of Transportation is doing paving work on Route 114 in Scarborough. It's happening between New Road and Running Hill Road from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Drivers should expect lane closures and plan for delays. It is Tail Wagon Tuesday right here on Good Day, Maine. That's right. We are showing off your adorable pets. This is April's dog, Rin. What a little <laughs> cutie, huh? April says they're enjoying the last bit of nice weather. Does look like a nice day there. Thank you so much, April, for sharing. And this sweet dog is Bandit. Thank you, Matthew, for sharing this adorable photo with us. I wonder how old Bandit is. Looks like a puppy. Yeah, it does look like a puppy, huh? So cute. We love sharing pictures of your furry friends. Make sure and keep sending those photos in. You can head to our website, WGME.com, and just click on the Chime In tab. Well, yesterday we uh, told you uh, how some parts of New England already saw some snow. Well, now the Midwest is experiencing the same kind of conditions. This is footage from Iowa, where heavy snowfall blanketed the eastern part of the state. One city reported up to nine inches of snow, Ooh. while some areas saw, oh, just three inches. That's still a lot, I think. The National Weather Service even issued a snow warning for three counties. And I know, Lexi, you know, the skiers and snowboarders, they're excited for the snow. I'm just not ready yet. Yeah, I think a lot of us are feeling that way. It was nice to see the snow up in the mountains over the weekend, but for us, we're looking at very mild conditions for this morning. And through this week, we'll see temperatures climbing into the 60s. So we're not talking about any snow here, uh, at least not this week. Now, today, temperatures are pretty mild this morning. In Portland, we're at 49 degrees, about 10 degrees above average for our morning low. We're looking at partly cloudy skies in Portland. Most areas looking at some more clouds, mostly cloudy skies out there. Winds are calm for now. We will see light winds out of the south through the day today. Really across the region, we are looking at a milder start to the day with temperatures in the mid to upper 40s. Even some spots in New Hampshire still at 50 degrees, 50 degrees in Portsmouth and in Concord, New Hampshire. 47 in Sanford, Lewiston, you're at 49 degrees, Augusta 48 degrees right now. We still have some fog out there this morning. Visibility is down to a mile in Lewiston, a mile and a half visibility in Augusta. So watch out for some fog. And we do have some light rain showers moving through New Hampshire. Some of these showers are just starting to get into York County as well. Slight chance for some of these showers to move into southern and central Maine. I do still think most of the rain showers are going to hold off until later on this afternoon and this evening. But slight chance for some showers this morning, especially through New Hampshire. Also through the mountains, will you have another? round of rain showers moving in from the west. They're all associated with a cold front that is going to move through the region today and then tomorrow moves back into the region as a warm front keeping the clouds and the chance for showers in place. We are looking at mild temperatures for today. We'll see highs climbing into the low to even some mid 60s for interior spots of York County also into New Hampshire. Well winds out of the south southwest sustained between around 5 to 10 miles per hour. So let's track out the chance for showers. Storm tracker is isn't even doing a good job picking up on those showers that are now moving through New Hampshire and also getting close to York County and starting to move into York County. Chance for a light shower through southern and central New Hampshire this morning. Some of those showers may continue to move east into uh, Maine as well. Then this afternoon, we'll have the chance for a few more showers as, as well. Temperatures climbing into the 60s. Tonight, cloudy chance for showers. We'll see overnight lows in the 40s to low 50s. And then tomorrow, 
will remain cloudy, a little bit cooler tomorrow as well. We'll have winds coming on shore. That's going to keep us just in the 50s tomorrow. We'll see the chance for some more showers tomorrow and then tomorrow night that front finally moves through the region and we'll see a return to sunshine as high pressure moves back in for Thursday and Friday. Thursday was looking great. Sunny skies with highs in the mid 60s. It'll still be nice on Friday as well. We're looking at lots of sunshine, not quite as warm on Friday. We'll see highs Friday and near 60 degrees. Here's a look at your extended seven day forecast of staying mild, well above average with temperatures climbing into the 60s. We'll see overnight lows staying in the 40s and 50s. Then our next chance for some rain showers will be Saturday night as a cold front comes through. Jeff and Katie, over to you. All right, Lexi, thanks so much. And as the cold air continues to move in, there's a great need for warm clothing and winter gear as well. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Black Lives Matter has now opened its clothing drive at Dragon Star Creations in Sanford. They're accepting new or gently used winter gear. Donations are also accepted at upcoming events, and they'll gradually open more donation locations in the future. What a 620 coming up uh, next on Good Day, Maine, right here on CBS 13. The need for personal protective equipment creating a new problem in the world. Why population activists or pop pollution activists are now pushing for reusable face masks. Plus, Election Day is right around the corner. The final push in the race for the White House and what the candidates are focusing on. And still ahead at 6.30, a family in Atlanta sues the city for $16 million, who they say is responsible for their eight-year-old daughter's death. You plus Stir, the new free TV. Stir streams local news live and on demand. Classic TV and more. Plus, binge watch for free. Stir delivers 100 plus extra channels with more than 5,000 hours of TV shows and movies. And the biggest plus of all, it's all free. No subscription necessary. You plus Stir. Download now. Stir, the new free TV. Maine is a big, small town. Even when we disagree, we work things out because it can be a long winter up here. But this year, something's different. A fortune in out-of-state money is being spent distorting Susan Collins' record. But Susan strengthened Medicare, protected patients with pre-existing conditions, and she wrote the law that protected 250,000 main jobs during this pandemic. So when you see the attacks on Susan, don't let them scare you. Maine is better than that. I'm Susan Collins, and I've approved this message. Legendary. Just one eighty nine per month. New this morning, Maine Agriculture Authorities is confirming an outbreak of an invasive plant in York County. They say Japanese stilt grass was found at a nursery. It is the fir a first confirmed location in Maine. Nursery owners and land managers are being urged to search properties for the plant. It makes it difficult for native trees and wildflower seeds to grow. Happening tonight, Saco is holding its pumpkin carving night. Uh, families can register at SacoRec.com. Families will be given a socially distanced table, one large pumpkin and two many pumpkins, paint, and carving tools. Groups of more than five people must compete and complete an additional registration. It costs $25 per family and space is limited due to coronavirus restrictions. It starts at 6 o'clock tonight at the Saco Community Center Gym. And right now, personal protection equipment is leading to a rise in litter. Many people are leaving single-use masks and gloves on the ground. An environmental organization is now encouraging people to use reusable masks. So many of those are made out of non-natural materials, which end up in the, uh, the waterways. You know, they are detrimental to, again, our water, um, animals and their habitat. So it's really just, you know, put, either put it in the trash can or get reusable if possible. Well, according to the BBC, litter from PPE could have a lasting impact on the environment. 626 coming up in the next half hour on Good Day May in the United Kingdom accuses Russia of cyber attacks. And the Portland City Mayor gives her first State of the City address, what she says she wants to focus on going forward. Catch CBS 13 News updates on Country 99.9 The Wolf. You know how these things start. You hear Wendy's is offering free any size hot coffee with any breakfast sandwich. So you have to tell a friend. They get a fresh brew cup and tell another friend. And so on and so on. So get to Wendy's for free coffee with breakfast.
It's the Lazy Boy Super Sale. Buy more, save more with amazing savings throughout the store, plus special financing available. For a super selection at Super Savings, don't miss the Super Sale. Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries. Live life comfortably. future is calling. It's time to excel. University of Southern Maine. It's either the assurance of a 165-point certification process, or it isn't. It's either testing an array of advanced safety systems, or it isn't. It's either the peace of mind of a standard unlimited mileage warranty, or it isn't. For those who never settle, it's either Mercedes-Benz certified pre-owned, or it isn't. The Mercedes-Benz Certified Pre-Owned Sales Event, now through November 2nd. Shop online and build your deal today. Are you looking for that good old-fashioned, family-owned hardware store experience? Then look no further. Eldridge Lumber's newest location in Portland has all the supplies, services, and materials you need, along with the reputation that you can trust. We offer the best products at competitive prices from large contract jobs to do-it-yourself projects. Eldridge Lumber is your one-stop shop for everything you need. Eldridge Lumber and Hardware, now located on Presumpscot Street in Portland. Stop by and let us help you get the job done. For the last year, I've traveled to every corner of our state and seen up close what makes Maine so special. It's our people. Thank you so much for coming to Old Town. Nice to meet you. I'm so happy to meet you, too. I think Sarah Gideon is a person who listens to other people. She's bringing that wonderful energy that Sarah has that's really going to make a difference. But she's honest. She can't be bought. Thank you for being here. Washington is working well for Mitch McConnell. It's not working well for the average American. Sarah's willingness to work across the aisle, not worrying about the Republicans or who's Democrats, because frankly, most people are tired of that crap. She's like a breath of fresh air after Senator Collins. She has a heart, and uh, that, that makes a big difference. I've got a lot of faith in you. We need some new blood in Washington, and we need it now before it's too late. I'm Sarah Gideon, and I approve this message. I'm backing you 100%. Thank you so much. Top stories we're following for you this morning. There will be changes to the presidential debate on Thursday. Organizers say one rule change includes muting the candidate's microphones while the other is speaking, but only for two minutes at the start of each topic. Today is the deadline set by House Speaker Nancy Pelosi for an agreement on a coronavirus stimulus relief bill. She says if no agreement is reached by today, no bill will pass before Election Day. Pelosi met with Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin for an hour yesterday. If a deal is reached, it would have to pass the Senate, but Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has yet to commit to bringing it to a vote. A main church and its affiliated Christian Academy are closed after a coronavirus outbreak. The main CDC says 32 people have tested positive at Brooks Pentecostal Church. They say anyone who visited the church since October 2nd should consider self-quarantining. Academy leaders say they plan to remain closed for another week. Church leaders have not returned our calls. Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Katie Sampson. And I'm Jeff Peterson at 6.30 on Tuesday, October 20th. Meteorologist Lexi O'Connor is live outside in the Eldridge Lumber Weather Deck. A little easier to be outside than yesterday. Yeah, yeah, we definitely don't need the heavy jacket this morning, Lexi. That's right, Katie and Jeff. Yesterday morning, I was shivering out here because we were in the low to mid-30s. This morning, we're in the 40s, near 50 degrees in Portland. 49 degrees right now in Portland and Lewis and Augusta. You're also well above average in the upper 40s, 48 degrees there. Even Sanford, 47 degrees right now, so not quite as cool as yesterday morning. We do have some fog out there. Visibility is down to a mile in Lewiston, down to two mile visibility in Augusta, so watch out for that. We also have some light rain showers moving through New Hampshire, and some of these are trying to get into York County, just starting to get into interior portions of York County. I don't have any reports of any of these showers actually reaching the ground, but we do have the chance for a light scattered shower through the day today, and it's all associated with this 
cold front that is off to our west right now. That will keep the clouds around and the chance for some scattered showers. Temperatures today, though, will be climbing into the low 60s for most towns. Some spots even making a run at the mid 60s. So cloudy showers, but at least we're looking at some mild temperatures. I'll have a closer look at the timing of those showers coming up in your full forecast. Katie and Jeff back inside to you. Three more states start early voting today. Millions across the U.S. have already cast a ballot either in person or by mail. But for any undecided voters, President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden will have a final debate on Thursday. Nancy Chen reports that there is a new rule for that debate. After a combative first matchup, the Commission on Presidential Debates is making a change for this Thursday's event. The Radical question, left, will you who shut is up, your, man? Listen. At the start of each segment, both candidates can talk for two minutes while the other's microphone is shut off. For the remainder of the 15 minutes, neither will be muted. Another real great one. Yesterday at a rally in Arizona, President Trump attacked moderator Kristen Welker, an NBC News journalist. But I've known her. She's been screaming questions at me for... A long time, and uh, she's no good. President Trump says the change is unfair and that he wants to focus more on foreign policy. The Biden campaign insists Mr. Trump is afraid to talk about his, quote, disastrous COVID response. All right, who voted today? Democratic vice presidential nominee Kamala Harris didn't let a downpour dampen her mood as she helped kick off early voting in Florida. They no, when we vote, we win. Local election officials say they saw high turnout throughout the state. I came in person, just wanted to be sure that the vote counted. Wasn't sure if there'd be any trouble or problems with the mail system. Long lines are also expected in Wisconsin today with the start of early voting. Our biggest concern is with COVID-19 right now, making sure that we limit as much congestion at polling places as possible. Nationwide, more than 31 million people have already cast a ballot, according to a tally by the University of Florida. Nancy Chen, CBS News, Washington. New developments this morning. Portland is looking to help people who are experiencing homelessness find shelter this winter. Good news, Kara Bracken joins us now live. And Kara, coronavirus restrictions have prompted the city to look at expanding their options. That's right, Portland is looking at ways to expand that uh, housing. And so this is one of the areas we're here at the Community Correction Center, also known as the Joyce House. Now this is one of the areas where Portland is looking at adding beds to help with that. And right now the city is looking to finalize the memorandum of understanding with county officials to use this temporary location. Now it comes amid growing concerns about Portland's homeless population during the pandemic that were highlighted this summer when we reported on gatherings at Deering Oaks and the sleep out protest at City Hall. The city has had to reduce capacity at existing shelters due to COVID-19 precautions, but this new plan could bump the city's capacity from 244 to 274. Now the city is expecting to be able to use the Community Correction Center as a shelter from the end of this month through April 30th as a shelter for up to 50 people. In addition, city staff are working with a hotel in the area to provide beds for up to 149 people. Right now, the city is offering 75 beds available at the Oxford Street Shelter. There are 75 beds at the Portland Expo Center. Local area hotels are providing emergency shelter through general assistance, the family shelter, which is full right now, and motel rooms provided to family shelter guests as overflow. And a note here that starting on October 25th, the city will not be able to keep using the Portland Expo as a shelter as their contract with the main Red Claws begins on October 25th. Now, the Community Correction Center here on County Way would help replace those beds, and it would also not cost the city anything extra. It would be monitored by city staff 24-7. We're reporting live in Portland. I'm Kara Bracken for Good Day, Maine. And happening today, the Portland Planning Board will meet to discuss a proposal. Preble Street Resource Center is looking to convert a building on Portland Street into an emergency shelter. Today's workshop starts at 4.30 p.m. on Zoom, and there will be a public hearing at 7.30. Portland Mayor Kate Snyder says her overall goal right now is to work collectively with city officials and the community to achieve good outcomes for the city. Those goals announced during her first State of the City address. Going forward, she says she wants to address affordable housing, reducing homelessness in Portland, increasing public transit, and addressing high property tax. She's also emphasizing the challenges the pandemic is posing on the city in accomplishing its goals. Our frame in terms of goals, priorities, and issues to address expanded in ways we could never have predicted. 
COVID-19 quickly and dramatically changed our city, our state, and the whole world. Mayor Snyder also says one practice city officials plan to continue using is Zoom for city council meetings. She says they find the method more efficient for public engagement. Officials in Livermore have accepted a grant to support their election process. This is according to our media partners at the Sun Journal. Proposed uses for the $5,000 include upgrading the town website, buying portable radios, and buying a handicap accessible voting station. Uh, there was also a proposal to use some of the money to recover costs for mailing absentee ballots. Happening today, Sarah Gideon will tour a recovery center in Portland. She'll be at Crossroads Recovery Center as part of her Health Care is on the Ballot tour. While there, she'll be discussing substance use disorder and how main care expansion has supported the center's work. Later today, Gideon will hold supper with Sarah in Scarborough to meet with Mainers and discuss her campaign priorities. A Portland police officer is kicked in the face while trying to take a, a suspect into custody. He suffered a concussion and even a chipped tooth. Police say on Sunday night they tried to stop this guy right here, Kellen Hollenkamp, for a traffic violation on High Street. The car stopped but took off when an officer got out of his vehicle. Police say when they caught up to him, Hollenkamp violently resisted arrest and kicked an officer right in the face. Hollenkamp is in the hospital. Upon release, he is expected to face multiple charges, including assault on a police officer. Maine game wardens say life jackets likely saved a father and son when their canoe capsized in Clifton. It happened while the 50-year-old man and his 9-year-old son were canoeing on Hopkins Pond on Sunday. Both were wearing life jackets, which allowed the father to climb back into the canoe while his son hung onto the side. Maine game warden Sergeant Alan Gillis says in part, quote, this time of year hypothermia sets in quickly and you lose your ability to swim and stay afloat. This story likely would have had a tragic ending if the family were not wearing their life jackets. Well, Good Day Maine is on your side with a warning from the Maine Department of Labor about unemployment phishing scams. The department says people are using stolen usernames and passwords to log into unemployment accounts and make changes. Some of the phishing attempts mimicked the Maine DOL and provided a link to reset a password. The department says it would never send a password reset email if you didn't request it. If you do receive one of these emails and didn't ask for it, Delete it immediately and do not respond. New this morning, the family of an eight-year-old shot during a protest in Atlanta says they're suing the city for $16 million. The wrongful death lawsuit blames her killing on, quote, the negligence, recklessness, and gross misconduct of the city of Atlanta. She was shot and killed on the 4th of July. Also new this morning, the United Kingdom is accusing the Russian government of carrying out cyber attacks linked to the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. The accusation is directly against the GRU, Russia's military intelligence service. The UK claims the GRU carried out those cyber attacks on officials and organizations involved in the planning of the Olympics. This comes just a day after the U.S. charged six Russian intelligence officers for high-profile attacks targeting the 2018 Winter Olympics. Still ahead on Good Day Maine, a tribe in Maine dealing with decades of unsafe drinking water. The work now being done to correct the issue. Plus a middle school student publishing a novel about dealing with bullies based on her own experiences. And up next, Maine astronaut Chris Cassidy preparing to come home. The change of command today at the International Space Station. I found drug paraphernalia in the house. That's not true, Your Honor. Have you ever been in a drug program? No. Do you need one? Judge Judy, today at 4 on CBS 13. In Maine, you've got a big responsibility this year. Not only... I'm Susan Collins, and I've approved this message. At the law offices of Joe Bornstein, we're Maine lawyers, proud to be Maine people. Mayor Chris Cassidy is wrapping up a nearly 200-day mission in space. Today, he'll hand over command of the International Space Station to a newly arrived Russian cosmonaut. The ceremony will be broadcast at 4.15. You can watch it live on NASA TV or on the agency's YouTube page. Uh, tomorrow, Cassidy and two other astronauts will begin their trip back to Earth. They're expected to land at 10.55 p.m. Uh, this is Cassidy, who, by the way, is from York, his third flight into space. 
Right now, members of the Passamaquoddy tribe at Pleasant Point say they've been dealing with years of unsafe drinking water. An article from a local paper back in 1982 claims the water already had an unsafe level of trihalomethanes or THMs. Those are considered pollutants and some can even cause cancer. We have a direct relationship. It's uh, like a kinship to the water. We see it as a relative and it's a part of us. So there's no separation. Tribal leaders are working with the water district to correct the problems. Some say the problem is with the water highlight inequity. A report from the U.S. Water Alliance says native tribes are more likely to face this problem than any other group in the country. If this was Kenny Bunkport or Cape Elizabeth, Arno or Caribou, Maine, it would have been resolved three or four decades ago. So where does that leave us and how does that make us feel, right? We have to internalize some of that in terms of like, is this what we are left with? Is this what we deserve? So far, Wabanaki Public Health has distributed nearly 7,000 gallons of water to tribe members. Oh, right now, there is a growing movement called Abolish Greek Life. Students in the movement say the Greek system is inherently discriminatory. In a time, they want to focus on social justice. One of the largest movements is at Vanderbilt University. Organizers say at least 300 students have dropped out of Greek life there, calling for the entire system to be disbanded. To continue to participate in a system that you know is directly excluding people based on race, class, and gender identity is morally irresponsible. Well, supporters of Greek life argue it can and should continue to exist. They cite philanthropic activities as well as lasting friendships and connections made in a fraternity or a sorority. National fraternity and sorority leadership uh, do not believe this movement will lead to the abolishment of the Greek system. New this morning, a seventh grade student publishes her first novel based on her own experience with bullying. Sydney Joe Washington's book is called Malaysia's Big Move. It's part of an anti-bullying series and is about a preteen that moves to a big city and has to find nice ways to deal with not so nice classmates. That's something Sydney has seen firsthand with a close friend. She was being bullied about her weight and how she dressed, how she talked, her hair and stuff like that. And a couple of girls and I saw it and I was just like, really? Like, that's crazy how people can like bully other people like that. It's just really, really mean. Sydney used her downtime during the pandemic to write the story. She hopes her book builds self-confidence in children to stand up to bullies. And Sydney now has an anti-bullying nonprofit and is even working on more books. What an incredible person. Oh, good for her. Well, right now, there are a lot of great views across Maine, even as we move past peak fall foliage. And you have sent us some uh, lots of photos on Chime In and what you've been seeing out there. Let's take a look. We got this photo from Dick. He said these ponds are right in his backyard. Wow, what a backyard that is, huh? That is incredible. <laughs> can you imagine waking up, having your morning coffee, and looking at that view every day? Or can you imagine having to mow that? Oh, that's true, too, <laughs> but it's beautiful. This was taken at St. George River in Thomaston. Thank you so much, Shirley, for sharing this great picture with us. We always love the reflection on the water. Yeah, that's so cool with the water right there, too. We hope you'll keep sending us pictures as long as the leaves hang on the trees. Head to our website, WGME.com. Just click on the Chime In tab, and you might see those photos right here on Good Day, Maine. And the leaves stay on the trees, but not so sure how long they'll hang on. I know. We've been crossing our fingers each and every day that the leaves hang on because, of course, we know what's next. That's snow and winter. Yes, and we did have some snow over the weekend up in the mountains, uh, so it's nice that we are getting some mild temperatures and still seeing the nice foliage out there. I think on a cloudy day, the colors really pop, and that's what we will have for today. Mostly cloudy skies out there right now. A live look out our Portland sky cam looking towards Casco Bay and Fort Gorgeous shows uh, the start to a nice sunrise despite the cloud cover. We're seeing some shades of pink coming in. The sun rises at 7.02 this morning. We we're looking at mostly cloudy skies for most areas. Uh, some breaks in the cloud cover though in Portland right now. 49 degrees, much warmer than where we were yesterday morning. In fact, across the region, we're looking at temperatures in the 40s, a good 10 to even close to 20 degrees milder than where we were yesterday morning. These temperatures are above average. We're typically in the upper 30s for morning lows, so not quite that cool this morning with the clouds keeping temperatures from dropping off too much. We do have some fog visibilities down 
down to a mile in Lewiston, also down to three miles around Augusta. And we do have some showers starting to move into the region as well. They're all associated with a cold front that is going to keep the clouds in place. Also the chance for some scattered showers through the day today and into tonight as well. If I zoom in on the satellite radar, we actually have a batch of some light rain showers moving through southern and central New Hampshire. A few of these are starting to move into York and Cumberland County, a little bit ahead of schedule actually. Most of the rain showers still off to our north and west, but if I zoom in further, you can see that we do have some light showers starting to move into York and Cumberland County. Slight chance for a light shower this morning and then through the day today, you'll probably want to keep that umbrella around. Not every town's going to see a shower, but we will have the chance for some scattered light showers. Temperatures today will climb into the low 60s for most towns. Even some spots for interior York County and New Hampshire could get into the mid 60s. So despite the clouds and the showers, it will be a pretty mild day. We'll have the chance for some light scattered showers through the day today, staying very cloudy through the day as well. And then tonight we will have the chance for some more showers with cloudy skies. Overnight lows tonight drop down into the 40s to low 50s. We will have clouds in place for tomorrow as well with the chance for scattered showers as this front comes back into the region as a warm front. It's not going to be as warm tomorrow. Temperatures tomorrow will stay just in the mid to upper 50s with an onshore wind keeping us a little bit cooler. We finally have this front move off to our east of tomorrow night and we'll see a return to the sunshine on Thursday and Thursday's looking good. Thursday we will have temperatures climbing into the mid 60s with mostly sunny skies. Taking a look at your extended seven day forecast, we are looking at a nice dry end to the week. Friday we will have temperatures climbing only into the 60s though, around 60 despite mostly sunny skies. Chance for some showers Saturday night as our next cold front comes through and then Sunday is looking sunny but cooler with highs in the 50s. Katie and Jeff, over to you. Lexi, thank you. We still have another two hours of news and weather over on Fox 23. Coming up at 7 on Good Day, Maine. President Trump and Joe Biden prepare for their second face-off. The changes never seen on the debate stage and the questions they'll be asked. Plus, the latest research that could keep your family safe at the dinner table this holiday season. That's all ahead on Good Day, Maine on Fox 23. Your journey requires Liberty Mutual. They customize your car insurance so you only pay for what you need. Wow, that will save me lots of money. This game's boring. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. I tried a new laxative that's both gentle and fast. New great tasting Dalkalax Soft Juice works naturally with the water in your body in as little as 30 minutes. Puts you comfortably in control. New Dalkalax Soft Shoes. Let's talk about floors. Floors for toddlers. Floors for toys. Floors for stories. Floors for screams. Floors for feasting and foraging. Floors for finding out how flexible you are. There's floors for all. And now they're at Lowe's. Come on, let us floor you at Lowe's with new on-trend styles, lighting, and decor. Choose your style, get it installed. The liberals in Washington all want the same thing. A reckless and complete government takeover of our health care system. Jared Golden is siding with them. Their plan could close rural hospitals, limit access to doctors, and ban employer-provided insurance. Dale Crafts and Maine Republicans are fighting for our families. In Congress, I'll fight to protect those with pre-existing conditions, take on big pharma, and lower costs for families. I'm Dale Crafts, and I approve this message. Times are tough. Can we afford Susan Collins? Collins voted seven times to gut protections for pre-existing conditions, for higher taxes on middle-class families, higher prices for prescription drugs. And Susan Collins voted eight times for budgets that slashed Medicare. We are getting slammed while Collins cashes in. Six million dollars from corporate PACs. After 24 years in Washington, Susan Collins is costing us too much. SMP is responsible for the content of this advertising. One, two, three, up! Uh. And, and I'm proud to approve this message.
Happening today, we're talking baseball. The 2020 World Series gets underway. The Los Angeles Dodgers will be taking on the Tampa Bay Rays. The best of seven series will be played at Globe Life Field in Arlington, Texas. That's the new stadium for the Texas Rangers. Well, because of social distancing restrictions, attendance is limited to 11,000 fans. That is it. Two guitars that belong to the late rock star Eddie Van Halen are going up for auction. Yeah, both are custom made. Look at these. Uh, Van Halen played one of them on stage. The other was created by Van Halen and his guitar tech at his home. Julian's Auctions will sell them in December during an auction that includes items from Michael Jackson and other superstars as well. Van Halen died earlier this month after a battle with cancer. I'm sure a lot of people are going to jump at that yes. opportunity. Uh, well, you have to come to your screen and look at this. This is footage from the National Zoo in Washington, D.C. This is of a giant panda carrying her cub to show him their habitat next to their den. <laughs> Look at that. The nine-week-old male giant panda cub is still learning to crawl. That is adorable. He's like, come on, let's get in there. He's come like, come on. Come take a look. Look yeah. at where we live. So cute. <laughs> so cute, I yeah, know. <laughs> hey, in Egypt, archaeologists have discovered a large number of coffins believed to be 2,000 years old. They joined the almost 60 coffins already recovered from the area. Well, details on the findings haven't been released yet, but officials believe the coffins contain senior statesmen and priests from the 26th dynasty. That dynasty ruled Egypt during the 6th and 5th centuries B.C. Wow. Yeah, the only thing uh, missing from that story and the video is Indiana Jones. <laughs> exactly. It. It's 6.56 on this Tuesday morning, and we are heading over to Fox 23 for two more hours of Good Day, Maine. But nice to see the start of a sunrise this morning. Yeah, currently Portland, it's 49 degrees. Freiburg, good morning, everybody. It's 42. And good morning, Old Orchard Beach. Hey, you folks waking up to 48. We hope to see you over on Fox 23. In Maine, you've got a big responsibility this year.